Hi there. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for coming. My name is Lydia Tredis, and I am an evolutionary astrologer trained in the Jeffrey Wolf Green School of EA. And I'm here with you today to talk about Uranus in Taurus through the houses, which will actually be the second part of this talk. The first part of the talk, I will just go into the nature of Uranus, the nature of Taurus, um, and some basis in EA just to give us some grounding. So we can just proceed right ahead. And um, yes, thank you. Today we're going to look at Uranus and Taurus through the houses. I'm going to introduce the nature of Uranus and Taurus. We will then go through the influence of Uranus and Taurus through the astrological houses. And I'm not going to bother to read these dates right here, but it gives us the timeline that Uranus is in Taurus. Uh, all told, it takes about eight years. We, the, in, the first ingress was May 15th of this year, and uh, it will end April 25th, 2026. Uranus has just dipped its toe into Taurus and had a stationary retrograde on August 7th of this year. Uranus will move back through Aries from November 6th, 2018 until March 6th of next year. And Uranus will remain in Taurus until 2026. As I have sun myself at two degrees of Taurus, I was prompted to talk about the ingress to Taurus early on. It has already made a direct hit on my sun. It's sitting there pretty much today and is squared by the moon at zero degrees in Leo in my chart. And here I am saying yes to Linda, who has invited me on several occasions, but I politely declined. I said yes to her now to participate in this EA Zoom meeting. As an evolutionary astrologer, Uranus holds a great deal of interest for me, and while it is a planet that notoriously doesn't move in a straight line, I thought I would give it a go anyway in trying to explain a bit of how we may feel. The unexpected nature of Uranus may shake some of us up, but as the higher octave of Mercury, there can be some fun-loving trickster energy as well, especially in Taurus. Taurus likes a good joke. Typically, it's an earthy joke, like a pratfall, like someone charging headlong into the shrubbery to avoid running into a llama. It's good to remember that Uranus is always somewhere in our charts. It is activating or being activated by transits and progressions and by the vibration of our own learning and evolution. There is always mayhem someplace. There is always the call to awaken and individuate, but sometimes it is louder than others. We can only truly affect our own vibration. We can join with a group and join our vibra vibrations together, and that can be what makes a revolution. But it starts with our own vibration. It starts with knowing how we want to feel inside our own field. Then we can make choices from our own individuating state to when to join with others and when to feel into our own system and refine what we want within that system. There is always a place of peace in the mayhem. The nature of Uranus, the orbit is about 40, 84 years, about the span of a human life. When Uranus is halfway around, we have one of our midlife crisis transits, the Uranus opposition. At around 63 years of age, while we are integrating our second Saturn return, we will have a balsamic Uranus square to itself. At 84, it can be the completion of the life cycle. Many people die at that age. Uranus has made a complete turn around the wheel, and Saturn has made three turns. It is the completion of a cycle, and the entity has mutated from the final square of Uranus to itself at 63. The business of Uranus, subconscious memory, individuation, deconditioning from Saturnian constructs, release from restriction, triggers for transformation, liberation, freedom, and this one I love, the blueprint for your future self. The ability to break free from societal, familial, religious, educational, career boundaries and restrictions. We come from the pool 
and we return to the pool of all that is. Our human experience gives us the illusion of duality and separation so that we can experience the journey back to the whole. Where Uranus is in the chart can be where we separate from an area that we don't feel is useful or worth taking part in, or we could be breaking new ground someplace else. It could be valid, and it could be a place where we have been burned before, and the reaction to the trauma is separating us from joining in with something that could actually be a place of healing and awakening and liberation. We yearn to belong, and we long once again to be in the pool of all that is. And we swim away from it and learn to breathe air and have ideas that we want to be our own. Part of individuation is learning that we have a journey back to our own bigger self who has much better ideas because of our higher self's connection to the ultimate whole. Uranus invites us to operate in the world through our own authority free from the basis of our, of our resume or our credentials. It is where we separate or are separated, where we rebel with and without causes. It is unconscious memory. It is linked to karma through the unconscious memory. If there is trauma in the subconscious that has inhibited development or evolution, it needs to come up and into the conscious mind to be considered, to be named, and to be integrated. Jeffrey Wolf Green does state that there are harbingers that will indicate that a Uranus transit, transit is approaching and the type of liberation it will bring. However, due to the constraining and blinkering nature of Saturn's conditioning, we may not recognize the precursors that Uranian opportunity for increased freedom and therefore evolution is on its way. Jeffrey Wolf Green also states that Uranus transits have a collective effect an effect on the individual both. The effect is eight years as it transits a house and 16 if it is intercepted. The trauma signature in evolutionary astrology, we can't talk about Uranus without ta talking about Uranus and Aquarius as uh, sometimes a trauma signature. In evolutionary astrology, Uranus can indicate a trauma signature. It indicates a mental trauma signature if there are stressful aspects to Uranus, Aquarius, the 11th house, planets in the 11th house, and Uranus's natal ruler. Stressful aspects to other planets will indicate other types of trauma, and I'm just going to touch on this but won't expand on it further. Saturn being physical trauma, Pluto, Pluto being emotional and psychological trauma, and Neptune being psychic and existential trauma. We can have lived the same story in many ways and variations in past lives. No life is 100% free of trauma and unresolved trauma can send ripples through subsequent lives asking for liberation, for resolution, and for healing. It is nice that Uranus travels slowly through each house so that what needs to be awakened has time to do so. It also brings us genius as the higher mind of Mercury. It brings us to a new place. It may bring liberation and breakthroughs of consciousness. Uranus holds the subconscious memory across lifetimes. All happens at once in its view, so we can feel the vibration of the subconscious memories when they are triggered in the natal chart by transit, progression, etc. When it is an outer planet like this, the vibration of the world around us and even worlds around us can shake our vibratory field awaken old memories and call us to integrate and heal and allow ourselves to be free of that which no longer serves us. We can do this the more we are in touch with our own vibrational field. We can come to know what is shaking us from within or without and not take on any additional stuff that isn't for us to clear or assimilate. Know thyself. Know thyself. Know what you feel like. Saturn is the stable foil that sets off Uranus's genius, liberation, awakening, and trauma. Saturn is our conscious definition of our reality, how we operate in the physical world using its rules of time, space, 
limitation, constructs, buildings, rules, and any other kind of structure, authority, government, parents, religion, corporations, physical boundaries, and the confines of our physical body. Saturn is the boundary maker, the authoritarian, the rule maker, the consensus keeper, the timekeeper, the lord of karma. Saturn is also the ruler of Capricorn and is, is currently in that sign. Over the course of Uranus's transit through Taurus, Saturn will cycle through Capricorn all the way through to Aries. The nature of Taurus is that it is a fixed, receptive Earth sign. It is the second sign of the zodiac and is ruled by Venus. The business of Taurus is to value the self and know the things that we do value. Knowing our own vibration and the value of our individual self. Consolidation of energy, property, what we care about inside and out. The value we place on our needs, self-care, the survival instinct, the procreation instinct, pheromones, Recovering and discovering our identity, self-reliance, the meaning we give to our lives, and our inherent abilities and capacities. I want to touch quickly on the frog in the well in evolutionary astrology. We often talk about Taurus being the frog in the well, and it's the need to limit its view. So it's in the well, and it can only see this much sky, and that's as much as it can handle just needs to limit the world view so it can focus on itself so that it can get familiar with its own vibration and its need for self-reliance. Aries likes to begin things as a cardinal sign and has the instinct to be here and to begin. Begin what? Not sure, but it's here and Aries wants to do it. Taurus comes along, sees the Aries nature, to burst forth and the sometimes painful result. Taurus wants to stick around to tend the seed that was planted by Aries, who's moved on to do something else, very likely. The Taurus instinct is to survive. It sees that life as an individual can be finite and it can be cut short. Taurus wants to survive, it wants to eat and to clothe itself and to find a place safe from the elements to sleep and to make it through the night. Taurus rules the voice, and it can sing, and it can scream away the night, and anything that goes bump in it. The Venus connection in Taurus is to love itself, to value itself, and to connect with the earth and the self and the awareness that I am here on earth, this beautiful, amazing earth, and I'd like to stay a while. Taurus may disconnect with the adventure in life to maintain its survival. It is sometimes living with a small L and sacrifices the adventure in order to live another day. With the natural square to Leo, we want to creatively self-express our values. With the natural square to Aquarius, ruled by Uranus, we want to individuate by learning how we feel to ourselves on our own, under our own resources. In polarity to Scorpio, we see how we can hold our own in a committed relationship. How we can dip in and out of the I-thou on a deep and transformational level, share our resources, but be able to, resource our, to uh, be a resource to ourselves and not give over to Libran codependency. Are you sleeping, eating, talking to someone else? getting fresh air and receiving the true Taurus fuel of delicious food, soothing fabrics, kind words, and connection with nature. Wherever Uranus and Taurus visits in your chart by house, self-care will help to ground and center and begin the day again. And I will add, no matter what that day brings. <laughs> This is where the value part of Taurus comes in. We may value the accumulation of stuff in the herd state to prove to others if we have things of value. We must in turn be valuable. We are also bolstered by the values of our religion, our family, and possibly our politics. 
The echoes of these may flow down from other lives and with the natural trine to Capricorn, we may abide, we may abide by them because it's the easier way to go. We feel the urge to procreate in Taurus, to carry on the line. The sex nature is pulled in here. With Venus also ruling Libra in an inconjunct to that sign, we see we may want to relate to others, and in the polarity to Scorpio, we may really need others. Taurus is learning self-reliance, and thus it retreats it to its hermitage, its well, its rut. The length and intensity of the retreat can vary. While there, we refine value system and value of self, independent of partner, family of origin, religion, workplace, or other imposing or conditioning construct. The isolation of Taurus can be momentary, cyclical, or almost lifelong, depending on other factors in the chart. When the role of the frog in the well, when, when in the role of the frog in the well, we can see what we are made of. We can feel our own vibration as free as possible from the input of others. We can find our own voice. Taurus does rule the throat. When we hop out of the well or when we speak from within it on an EA Zoom meeting, the resonance can give us the feedback from the higher self to strengthen and enliven further inner exploration. It is important with Taurus for encouragement to be part of the journey. Encouragement, especially when it comes from the self to the self, makes a cycle of upliftment that reminds the person of why they were embarking on the adventure in the first place. It reminds us why we are still interested in survival. Remembering our own value and the value of our individual lives and life itself, not just human life, but all life and the interconnectedness of all life is key with Uranus in Taurus. We can then be able to ground the electric nature of Uranus and use it not just to re-evaluate our own lives and journeys, but to share that resonance with Gaia and the group whole. Uranus is, after all, ruler of Aquarius, ruler of friends, community, and what Alice Bailey called the new group of world servers. We have the ability to instinctually ground the energy of the Aquarian age with Uranus and Taurus. Taurus can run a routine into the ground, but when the evolutionary impulse knocks on the door long and loudly enough, and Taurus gains the courage to go seek the beautiful green shoots and sunlight that it can only find above ground and outside of its rut, it will commit. It will become as focused on the new shoots and sunlight as it was on decorating the safety and routine of its bunker. Next slide. This is, I believe, what is happening with Uranus and Taurus. Uranus wants to decon decondition from Saturnian constructs. Taurus wants to know the feeling of its own vibration, which is in turn the entity's value. Their business dovetails. How they get there is a bit different. Taurus tunes the rest of the world out to feel only its own vibration. Uranus comes to us from the great beyond, a voice from beyond our time and space reality to tell us it knows what we want. Exactly. Remember, Uranus is our future self. It may crack a few eggs to help us get started with the omelet, however. It may shock us from the Taurian comfort zone. Uranus cannot be harnessed, but it can be channeled. We can allow ourselves to be lightning rods. If we increasingly become attuned to our own nature, we can be more balanced and able to recalibrate when the flashes come and thus start our day all over again. The way to be more awake to these harbingers is through increased awareness of one's own vibratory field. This way, when something pings our energetic field that we aren't used to, we are going to notice it like a strawberry in our salad when we usually only put in cucumbers and tomatoes. Only seeing what we are looking for may block the hints that Uranus is sending across the light years just to us. We can know, however, that in Taurus we are lightning rods. We can know that the earth is our grounding, and we can know that we find practices, practices to channel the energy and release the excess. 
During its transit through Taurus, we can practice grounding the, and ground the genius that comes through Uranus and release the jangled, shaky energy that can be Uranian trauma in the chart and in our life experience. Taurus's primary motivation is survival. It can still be said that, like Aries, it is fueled by instinct. Where Aries may not realize it needs to survive, it just knows it wants to live, Taurus realizes it needs to survive in order to live. We are more likely to be urged to survive if we have a reason to remain in human form. In Taurus, I believe it is helping us to ground the Aquarian age in a primal way. My belief is that we are moving incrementally into the age of Aquarius, and as planets move through Uranian signs, we ground it more and more and enter into that energy more and more until there's a full embodiment of it. Taurus, as the second sign of the zodiac, is still quite a primal energy. It wants to be safe and it wants to be secure. It makes a tent and finds a way to put a peg so that the desert winds don't blow that tent away. It makes a lightning rod so that the lightning doesn't burn the house down. In the higher mind, the lightning then can be channeled instead of burning the house down to make electricity. As it knows how to hunker down and it's, as its present predecessor is Aries, it can take the Aries lesson along with it, which is instinct. Even when dealing with outer planets and arguably, especially when we are dealing with the effects of outer planets by birth, transit, and progression, we may default to our instincts, resorting to the known and resorting to a bunker mentality. Taurus is very au fait with the bunker mentality, getting down underground with its canned goods and its reruns of Friends or Game of Thrones and disengaging with what goes on above ground or over the airwaves and in the media. At that point, its value is life itself. With all of the hiding, it can become a bit of a habit instead of an individuation tool or a way to integrate. Uranus and Taurus may actually break new pathways to evolution, ones that were too dense to be found on our own or too entrenched by Saturnine conditioning. To gather strength in a time of Taurus, of a, a time of Taurus transit, it is to soothe the inner animal that is bent on mere survival and reminding it through the strength of our whole chart to thrive, especially in times of trauma, stress, and evolution. First things first is key during this tr transit of Uranus and Taurus, which appears someplace in each, each one of our charts. With EA, it is nice because we always start out by pairing away and getting back to basics. Look at the house that Uranus is transiting in your chart. Think about the natural zodiac and what that indicates by sign and ruler. Look at the house and the house cusp and the ruler of that house cusp in your chart. Look at the planets that already reside in that house and their rulers. Look at the aspects to the planets that are naturally in that house and their rulers. Now we can look at Uranus gliding through that house and aspects it is making as it moves forward and by retrograde through that house. Uranus is the purveyor of evolution and genius. Its delivery system can be trauma, shock, awe, liberation, alienation, and pure inspiration. We can rebel with and without a cause. This will allow us to better engage with the transit of any planet through the houses of our charts, but especially with Uranus and Taurus. When considering this transit, what is the natal presence of Uranus and Taurus in the chart? Where is Uranus by birth, by sign, by house, and by aspect? Where is Aquarius and what is in the 11th house and on the 11th house cusp? What is the polarity point to your natal Uranus? Where is Taurus? What is on the second house cusp and in the second house? Where is Venus by house, sign, and what aspects are there to your natal Venus? As you know, this talk is an hour, and it will just be a jumping off point for the exploration of Uranus and Taurus moving through a particular house or houses in your chart. The ways to work with the energy of Uranus and Taurus, grounding, look at where you are, literally look at where your feet are, look down at your feet, I'm on the sidewalk in this town with this tree and this season and this kind of weather. Feeling excess energy going out the bottoms of your feet into the earth. Rem remember to eat, sleep, and care for our bodies. 
mind, spirit, home, and whatever else we care for and value. Back to basics. Where am I? What am I doing? What feels good to me? Find a way to relate to money and possessions that serves and suits your value system. Remember, Taurus attracts. Attract that which you want. Vision it and allow it. Uranus knows what you want and who you are becoming. The bottom line of this talk is this. Uranus is our subconscious memories from any old life. Uranus is our liberator. And Uranus is our future self. The memories, if traumatic, may be affecting our lives by running like a low-level depression does in the background, affecting all aspects of our lives. The Uranus transit in Taurus may activate that memory or those memories. It may bring it to the conscious mind. How it does that depends on what house Uranus is transiting and the aspects it is making to other planets in your chart. In Taurus, you will feel it at the core of your being, and it may trigger survival issues. It may invite you to make your house more comfortable so that you can think better to launch that new business, for example. Or it may trigger a health crisis in the sixth house that causes you to quit the kind of work you do or morph out of it and find something that meshes with your value system and your physical body. There is a desire to be free and to feel better. In EA, the emotional body and the moon lead the way. Taurus likes things to feel good and comfortable. At first, it may be shocking to varying degrees of what it will take to wake you up. But there is a chance for liberation from the discomfort of old memories running in the background, of old traumas, of old unpleasantness, of old ways of thinking, of going about your day to day. Excuse me. This old subconscious memory may be keeping us from caring for ourselves or by having fun in life by eating the good food, by keeping us from even considering what it is that we want in this life. Taurus wants to survive, but more than that, it wants to feel right in its skin. It wants to feel unified with itself. It wants to know who at core it is. It wants to be valuable, comfortable, contented, and enriched. That way, when Taurus goes anywhere on the trajectory to its Scorpio polarity point, it doesn't lose itself and get consumed back in the desires power struggles and ambitions of the other. As Uranus is transiting your chart in Taurus, and even as it retrogrades back into Aries for a while, apply these ideas to whatever house Uranus is in and aspects it is making, and apply the archetypes of that house to Uranus liberation and Taurus vibration and care for the self. Use the energy of that house to bring things to the forefront. The result will be leading a full life and a conscious life. Right, I'm taking a sip of a drink and then we're going to crack right on and we're right on schedule time-wise, so that's good to know. <sighs> okay, so I may not, you guys, read every single one of these bullets, but just as a reminder, I always, again, like to go back to basis and remember what we're dealing with. And I've just found that always really settles me with EA. I love that when we look at, at a chart, we look at Pluto, what house it's in, and then we move on. And I think that can help us when we're looking at any chart, any transit, or any aspect of evolutionary astrology. So we are talking about Uranus and Taurus moving through the houses. And of course, the first house is the Aries house. It's cardinal male fire sign and Mars ruled. The Aries nature is instinctual, has a sense of special destiny, energy going outward from the center, always changing and becoming something more or something new. It has the two steps forward, one step back signature of the cardinal signs. It rules the head, face, brain, and eyes in the physical body. It has a fire trying to Sag and Leo, cardinal square to Cancer, Libra, and Capricorn, and its polarity is Libra. Aries is the first sign of the zodiac, and it is pure fiery instinct bursting forth in the earth plane. It says, I'm here, I am here, and I have a special purpose. It needs to be free to instinctively experience that special purpose, and it needs to continually invent itself as it pleases. There can be fear of death, entrapment, or not actualizing what they came to do. The subconscious memory and mental trauma of past life 
is of early death often. Subconscious memories may arise of, of a feeling of being superhuman and traumatized to find out that they have feet of clay and are mortal. There could be, by transit, a subconscious fear of death, entrapment or not actualizing what they came to do. Cardinal signs have a two steps forward, one step back nature of instinctual desire to act and the primal fear of separation from the womb, from source. The individuation vibration, and I'm doing this for each of the houses, the call to liberation through Uranus and Taurus in the first house is through instinctual integration of energies. Mars is the, is the desire nature and Uranus in the first house in Taurus can reactivate the desire to move forward. It can call time on the feeling of not being enough and perhaps a shattering of the walls of the well so that the native will burst forth into a new way of being. With Uranus and Taurus, it can mean breaking free from some knee-jerk habitual behaviors. It can refine what is instinctual and offer it up to the gods, to the higher self. It is instinctual to make burnt offerings. It is a way of connection to the lifeblood itself. Make the two steps forward, one step back in, in the first house of dance. Consistency is the purview of Taurus. New and unusual habits serve the energy of continuous self-discovery that stems from Aries' innate sense of special purpose. It is a time to find new ways to instinctively follow the inner fire that leads us to incarnate in the first place. It can be an adventure to bring the desire nature into the body itself and feel the way toward liberation. Taurus, second house, it's a fixed earth feminine sign ruled by Venus. We've talked about its nature already, so I'll zip through these. Taurus's nature is to establish an identity. It is the frog in the well. It has some resistance to change. Its business is self-reliance, the inner relationship to the self, the survival instinct, the procreation instinct for the survival of the species, values and the value system, self-worth, listening to the self, inner relationship via Venus, Inherent abilities. I don't think that's talked about a lot, but I like that. It rules the throat, the neck, the thyroid, the vocal tract, and the cerebellum in the physical body. Natural trine to Virgo and Capricorn. Square to Leo and Aquarius. And, a, and Scorpio. <laughs> well, and a polarity to Scorpio. God, I said brain just stopped working for a second there. Taurus has the instinct to survive. The Taurus nature may isolate itself to learn the feeling of its own vibration. In order to be self-sufficient, it may get too to attached to routine and make a rut and decorate that rut. It may underachieve and accept less than it is capable of, not living up to its innate abilities in order to put food on the table. It needs to learn to value the self, consistently refine the value system, and find a way to live those values and know their own value. Go beyond the survival mentality in this house. With the sextile to Pisces, Taurus wants to have a meaningful relationship with Source. Neptune, ruler of Pisces, is the higher octave of Venus. Mental trauma can be past life destitution, starvation, poverty, lack of status, inability to care for the self. The call to liberation through Uranus and Taurus in the second house comes through refining how we value who we are what we want, what we already have, and our relationship to those things. Taurus loves ownership, and it likes stuff. A move towards stewardship instead of ownership can be beneficial and freeing. Pair away free of the fear of starvation to truly experience life, to understand and to utilize inherent abilities and potential, and to trust the self. Know your own vibration and love it. Love what is in and around your body. Enjoy the variety and the fabric of your daily life and what nurtures you. Taurus is resourceful and adaptable. If Uranus throws a wrench down the well, it might be just the tool you need to open up to life. Gemini, the third house. Gemini is a mutable sign. It's an air sign. It's masculine and Mercury ruled. Co-ruler with Virgo. Gemini nature is mental orientation. It feels 
safer in itself when it is gathering information, facts, and classifying the world through information. It is interpersonal communication, left brain, opinions and mental bias, restless and irritable from need of more information, but also information overload, boredom. It rules the nervous system, the arms, lungs, shoulders, hands, and the brain and the physical body. There can be intellectual defensiveness if ideas and opinions are challenged. It's learning discrimination of ideas and truths. It trines Libra and Aquarius, squares Virgo and Pisces, and its polarity point is Sagittarius. Gemini wants to understand the nature of human life on Earth by using its mind. They gather information and make systems to organize the mind. Knowing as much as possible and having information at the mental fingertips makes the Gemini feel secure. The polarity to Sagittarius helps us to assimilate information gathered in Gemini and find the truth in it. Sagittarius brings the Gemini mind to the higher truths. The co-rulership of Mercury with Virgo helps with analysis and discrimination of all of the information gathered by Gemini. The subconscious memories and mental trauma with Uranus going through the third is that their ideas were challenged or not valued or understood. The native can feel like an anachronism. For example, they know technical drawing using a pen and a draft board, but everyone's using the computer to do blueprints now and there's no use for their talents. The call to liberation through Uranus in the third house is in allowing the mind and nervous system to be open to new ways of gathering ideas and information. Refine how you speak to yourself, the inner dialogue. Allow information to come through your vibrational field, through the ordinary senses, through the earth, and from the cosmos, the inner cosmos, and that cosmos that is beyond our physical body and beyond our own universe. Meditations to make new pathways in the brain can be useful. Calming and clearing the mind and nervous system will clear the way to accumulating ideas that serve rather than just any idea that is new and shiny. A periodic review and mental house cleaning of information, opinions, and ideas to make room for updates and upgrades is helpful. Uranus is the higher octave of Mercury and in this house may give direct cosmic downloads straight through the nervous system. The fourth house, Cancer. It's a cardinal sign. It's a water sign. It is feminine, receptive, and ruled by the moon. It's nature. Cancer's nature is the structure and function of the ego, self-image, insecurities, early childhood environment, the mother and the mother figure, the inner male and female, sexual identification, orientation, and gender with the polarity to Capricorn, emotional body and emotional security, internal emotional security. It rules the breast, stomach, alimentary canal in the physical body. And it is a water trine to Scorpio and Pisces, cardinal square to Libra and Aries, and its polarity is Capricorn. Cancer is relating to information gathered in Gemini. We develop the self-image from the information gathered. There can be the feeling that they are not getting what they need emotionally and expect others to fulfill emotional needs throws the cancer back on itself. Two steps forward, one step back of the cardinal archetype. There is a need to find a way to be their own emotional touchstone, their own emotional bedrock. Projecting needs onto others no longer works, and they will get thrown back to begin again to find their own emotional maturity and strength. The mental trauma in present and past life experience of not being emotionally understood, not having feelings honored, a traumatic childhood and home life where possibly parents were, were absent altogether, or if they were there, maybe weren't nurturing, caring, loving, or parenty at all. The experience caused the cancer native to depend on themselves for emotional security and balance. The call to liberation with Uranus in Taurus in the fourth house is knowing that the emotional body leads all, and it is often informed by the physical body. Except that we physically feel in our bodies what needs to happen next. We can become a bigger ground, a greater lightning rod for our senses and emotions. 
increased connection with the earth and less avoidance will make for an easier and more fluid connection between what we feel we want and feeling into what we want. I also want to add that, that especially for, for the, the move through the cancer um, and fourth house, connecting during this whole transit with new and full moons with help, will help with the Uranus and Taurus in the fourth house integration. Memories or incidents may cause emotional wounds to come up to the conscious mind. The detachment of Uranus can help to internalize the concept that our emotional body has value and can be healed. Learning that we are responsible for our own emotional body is a big step in the path to individuation and release from dependence on others to fill emotional needs. We can then choose to join with others in interdependence rather than codependency. This is big. As we feel what it's like to have what we don't want, we feel the way to what we do want through every fiber of our physical and emotional being. On to Leo. Leo is a fixed sign. It's a fire sign. It's masculine and ruled by the sun. Its nature is creative self-actualization of the ego, actualization of a known special destiny and purpose. It may have delusions of grandeur and narcissism, needs to creatively self-express. The ego nature from the first four signs is building to a necessity to express all that it has become so far. Self-validation and self-empowerment are great individuators here. Learning that the source is the maker of creativity, not the small self. Strength of will controls the lives of others, especially their children. Generous with some kind of self-centered motive often. It rules the heart, chest, spine, and upper back. It has a trine to Sagittarius and Aries, square to Scorpio and Taurus, and the polarity is to Aquarius, which makes this special purpose socially relevant. Leo has the need to creatively self-express. The ego nature from the first four signs is culminating in a need to express all that it has become its identifiable special purpose. They see themselves at the top of the pyramid. Past life echoes of being loyalty or being treated as special and different, an experience that they weren't acknowledged for their creative genius or for their superhuman powers, much as a king in the past may have been considered to have special gifts just because he was the king. The call to liberation through Uranus in Taurus in the fifth house is in actually creating that which is bursting from their hearts. Taurus likes to actually make stuff, and Leo needs to create. Physically putting into form that which we are creatively expressing and doing it in new and exciting and revolutionary ways will be key. The Uranus transit through the fifth house may make very clear where their way of seeing their special purpose needs to be restructured, likely with a more universal, less self-centered goal in mind. In its square to Taurus, Leo has a little bit of its own frog in the well where it gets into its own studio and doesn't come out and see what else is going on in the world. With polarity to Aquarius, artistic collaboration can be key. It will lift up and expand all participants. The native may need to learn to be a friend among friends and a worker among workers during this transit. They can then recognize their own talents and unique gifts as an energy that can be shared with others. Their encouragement of others to creative self-actualization will increase their own value and feeling of fulfilled purpose. It is a win-win. This evolves the native from expecting to be honored as the one and only king or queen of the jungle to the Aquarian ideal that we are all princesses and queens and princes and kings of our own path, of our, our own special purpose. On to the sixth house, a transitional archetype in evolutionary astrology. We go one to five, developing the ego. In Libra, we go above horizon. And Virgo is making that transition between the two worlds, the two, the above and below. The Virgo nature is analysis. It's a transitional archetype. It's moving from subjective to objective awareness. It has the awareness of others. It rules health, work, and the attitude towards it. Also, overwork, daily life purification, ego deflation, 
a byproduct of all the analysis that the Virgo is doing is getting stuck in self-criticism, which then impedes further progress. So watch out for that if you've got it going through your sixth house. Masochistic signature, feeling of deserved punishment, service, rules the digestive system, intestines, spleen, trines Taurus and Capricorn, square to Sag and Gemini, and polarity to Pisces. Virgo transitions from the subjective to the objective, coming from the journey of Aries through the grandeur of Leo. We are about to go above the horizon into Libra. There is a need to put one foot in front of the other. Good orderly direction is key. Just get going and don't let the idea of perfection stand in your way. The monk in the monastery is not standing over your illumination manuscript that you're working on, telling you that the dragon's fire isn't the right shade of red. We can all, sub, we can all publish our own stuff in this age, and we don't need somebody standing over our shoulder. Remember that there is a universal power that will assist if they can gather, continue to gather positive mindset to them. It will attract more forward motion. Get out of your own way in the sixth house. Past life of persecution and martyrdom for their ideas and their causes can come up during this transit of Uranus through the sixth house. In present life, failure to launch because they never feel good enough or ready to go. So finding any way to move around that is useful. The call to liberation through Uranus and Taurus in the sixth house is expressed through a relationship to health and work. Learn to locate in the physical body where shifts and release need to happen. Virgo can be too busy caring for and about others to care for itself. The polarity to Pisces makes for a martyr-type complex. The injected guilt of the past, two, that should say 2,000 years, everybody, typo, can be purified with, that means the whole Piscean age there, can be purified with Uranus and Taurus in the sixth house. There could be a health crisis to help get priorities straight. Taurus teaches care of the self first. If there is energy left over, then we can serve others. Serving others to the sacrifice of the self sidelines the business of Virgo. Virgo needs to purify and release that which does not serve further growth as the entity prepares to go out into the world in Libra. We still do need some of our ego to move us through our lives and to help achieve our purposes. Don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. We are valuable, and Taurus teaches us how to value the self. Uranus could call us to task over serving, over working, over analyzing, over criticizing the self as we go through the purification process. Martyrdom is not called for. A daily routine that is sustainable and allows for time spent in a way that is valuable to the native is called for here. The source of all doesn't need you to prove your worth. Your very existence is your worth. I do see this as a house where the Uranus transit in Taurus will put you in the well for some quiet reflection if you don't go willingly. Going willingly is the easier, softer way. Love the self with the same energy that you use to serve others. But no one needs to be the master and no one needs to be the servant here. It can be fun. It can be relaxing. The transition takes energy and easing in and resting down in the well for a little while will help. Okay, on to Libra, above the horizon, joining with others, the seventh house, Libra, cardinal male air sign, which is ruled by Venus. The Libra nature is learning about the self through relationship, listening, learning how to be an equal in relationship. Learning balance can mean going to extremes. Librans do not inherently know how to balance. Typically, they are learning it. Potential for projection of needs on the other on the other, or codependency. Learning conditional versus unconditional love. Potential for expecting the partner to be God instead of God being God. It rules the kidneys, skin, lumbar region, and buttocks in the uh, physical body. Trying to Gemini and Aquarius, square to Cancer and Capricorn, and polarity to Aries. Libra learns about itself through initiating a variety of relationships. The natural cardinal square to cancer includes the lesson of being in relationship and being responsible for one's own emotional body. Next slide. There is a past life experience of sudden ending of relationships. 
This can lead to detachment, an inability to truly engage or attracting partners with that wound. There is the codependence that can spring from not wanting to be abandoned or over clinging that leads to being left. Past life memories of being left and leaving and the insecurity that that brings is a signature here. There's an experience of possibly not feeling heard and understood. The call to liberation through Uranus and Taurus in the seventh house is in the way we relate. It can be revolutionized and we may choose to relate to others in new ways. A willingness to engage with others in a way that serves both is called on here. Libra nature wants to liberate the way it lives through the trine to Aquarius. It needs to be free to connect in a way that allows us to meet our inner needs through the in conjunct to Taurus. During the eight-year transit of Uranus and Taurus through the seventh house, the opportunity is to meet the self again and again through the ebb and flow of a, of a variety of relationships. We will have time to see who we become in a relationship. And we, okay, I'm not sure what happened there, but are, oh, are we authentically ourselves? Question mark. Are we becoming who we think the partner would like us to be? Remembering not to get lost once we join with others. And of course, sometimes we do get lost. Flashes of clarity in regard to the self in relationship will liberate the native. Know that the two steps forward, one step back of cardinal signs may indicate flashes of insight and awareness and action, followed by periods of stepping back and integrating new ways of being. It's all part of the process. An experience of being truly who they are when, the others can, when with others can be the experience. There will always be insight about how we see and experience others. Libra's goal is to experience themselves through initiating a variety of relationships. The Uranus and Taurus transit will revolutionize the way of relating. Libra energy indicates all kinds of relationships, not just romantic ones. If we go with it, this can catapult the evolution of relationships to unforeseen places. Scorpio, fixed water sign, feminine, receptive, Pluto ruled. Scorpio nature is the soul that is eternal and evolving. It has two desires, to separate from source and to return to source. It, its nature is compulsive and obsessive, committed in fear and, and fear of committing. Sexual union, marriage, awareness of personal limitations, areas of weakness, shared resources and values through its polarity to Taurus, transformation, psychologi psychology of consciousness. It rules the DNA, reproductive system, bowels and excretory system, trines Pisces and Cancer, squares Aquarius and Leo, and has a polarity to Taurus. Past life experience of betrayal, the fear of the deeper meaning of commitment as an EA, Scorpio and the eighth house are marriage and consummation. They have an experience of people not turning out to be what they promised and the fear of relating again. Ab abuse can be a signature of the betrayal in this or other lives. The misuse of shared resources, sexual energy, and power and or power may have led to betrayal and psychological trauma. The ability to trust can be affected as a result of betrayal. The call to liberation through Uranus and Taurus in the eighth house is in the way we engage with our own willingness to transform in honoring our personal evolutionary journey. Liberation from what stands in the way of transformation through shocks to our personal value system and the way we care for ourselves is one possibility. If we can be ready to jump to a parallel universe, to be open to personal transformative experiences, to let go of, the, of fears and limiting beliefs, old resentments and expectations of outcomes, let the Taurus polarity remind the Scorpio nature that it needs to know itself, to honor itself in all stages of liberation and transformation. The power to transform is within. The source we run from and run toward is also within. The reminders could come from light years away or in our own connection to nature. Allow the frog to find a much better well. Maybe it's a greenhouse with room for a partner. The trying to cancer reminds the Scorpio that emotional security comes from within. No matter what is going on evolutionarily or romantically or with the stock market. Right use of sexual energy and power is possible here. The experience of valuing the self and the partner as individuals who are always in a state of some sort of change and evolution is also on the table.
In the interest of time, I'm going to not read all of these bullets and I'll just skip to the paragraphs on these. We're talking about Sagittarius in the ninth house. And the basic Sagittarius nature is to develop its intu intuition. Mental trauma has occurred in past lives of teasing, persecution, ostracism due to its beliefs. The call to liberation with Uranus and Taurus in the ninth house is that intuition will be brought to a new level. It may feel like there is a new voice in our head or allowing for more of the higher self to be embodied. Connecting with the earth and source will enhance this expansion of the intuitive body. This transit can introduce experiences or ideas that cause us to question beliefs or belief systems. Uranus may enlighten the evangelical idea that we all need to share the same belief system and that it is a personal journey, really. Releasing, revamping old ways of meditation, thinking, learning, and teaching, and aligning them with our own values. Liberation from attachment to calcified beliefs. It could, it could seem like we are going up several levels at once in our understanding, and the levels we seem to have skipped will click into place effortlessly if we allow time for rest and integration with this placement. Allowing aha moments and visions to be grounded in the physical body, self-care while integrating new ideas and beliefs can lead to an intuitive union with the inner self and the bigger truths. On to the 10th house and Capricorn, Saturn ruled, and the Capricorn nature is all about our relationship to authority, time and space, cause and effect, structure and constructs, and conditioning. Next slide, please. You guys can read that at your leisure. Subconscious memories can arise from feeling they are in a hostile environment in which they cannot thrive or succeed, which can lead to hopelessness and apathy. A past life resonance that forces beyond their control kept them from seeking their goals can affect the ability to follow goals in this life. Mental trauma can come from family of origin not accepting, valuing, or validating them. One or both parents can have been absent, because remember Capricorn is the polarity of cancer and it's about family of origin issues. As some make their colleagues a kind of family, the trauma can come from lack of acknowledgement or acceptance in the vocation or workplace. Depression and a feeling of overall futility can ensue. The call to liberation with Uranus and Taurus in the 10th house is liberation from societal, cultural ideas of how the life should be lived, valuing the call from the inner self to have meaningful work, a structure to the day that suits the intellect, the spirit, and the physical body. Allow innate abilities to come forth with ease in a construct that is purely our own, free of conditioning from family, government, religion, schools of thought. Freedom to be one's own authority, the idea that they are not in charge that the individual can be responsible for how they feel about goals and how they move toward them. Breaking down limiting beliefs around career and how to live as an adult. Finding what we want can lead us to having it. If one has been busy trying to keep up with the Joneses, there may be a crisis that calls them home to a more authentic and personal ambition. Crystallized patterns of depression and feelings of futility can be routed by a good look at how the self and its innate abilities are valued and can be useful. Aquarius, 11th house, fixed sign, air sign, masculine sign, Uranus ruled. And of course, its nature is individuation, liberation from conditioning. The subconscious past life memory of being the odd one out can arise at this time. Individuation is called for from issues around trying to fit the square peg in a round societal hole. Pain, ridicule, ostracism, and loss of community and or friends can result. This is past or present, just FYI. The frustration of unsuccessfully trying to fit in can cause psychological stress as the rebellion reaction leaks out the sides. The leak can become a torrent, causing more psychological pain and internal and external havoc. The call to liberation through Uranus in, the, in Taurus in the 11th house makes a physical connection to the Aquarian age. Luckily, we live in a time where, at least in some cultures, 
individuation is becoming the norm. The you do you mentality is really becoming prevalent. People are so busy with their own individuation, they just expect that that is what others are doing too. When Taurus meets Uranus, the native can retreat to the well and release conditioning as they descend inward. As memories arrive, arise that can bring up past traumas around not living authentically, the value system can be brought into alignment with a liberated consciousness. Innate abilities can be nurtured to bloom a more authentic self and perhaps a more authentic career path. In friend, inviting in friends who accept each other's paths to liberation and need to express that individuality can be inclusive experiences. Coming in out of the cold of ostracism and conformity is possible. Loving the self enough to see and be seen as they really are will deepen connections and increase freedom. There can be new ways of connecting with community, joining together in different ways with new ideas. Remembering our feeling of creative self-expression that is imperative in the fifth house and Leo, we can gain a feeling of free to be you and me in the 11th house Taurus transit by Uranus. It is a time to value the self in the group. The individual can attract a situation where what they have to express and share is of use and is valued. One more to go. Okay, culmination. 12th house, transitional archetype because it's the completion of the wheel. All 12 signs. Pisces is a mutable water sign, feminine and Neptune ruled. Pisces holds all of the archetypes of all of the signs. It is resolving all separating desires and releasing barriers, barriers to union with source. May we have the next slide, please. The subconscious memories of being imprisoned or sent to the convent or monastery may cause the individual to hide for fear of being trapped again. Hiding can come in the form of addictive behavior. The call for liberation occurs when the stress of the inner desire for an escape to a meaningful life and connection with source is at odds with the individual maintaining the status quo. Alcohol, drugs, addictive behavior of any kind is what Jung called a low-level spiritual search, which can be personified in Pisces. The call to liberation through Uranus and Taurus in the 12th house is in connecting with source in new and physical ways. Entering the well, diving down to the source of water that feeds the well, and then swimming it with it to a completely new place. Uranian flashes can initiate new spiritual experiences or reawaken old ones that can be resumed and expanded upon. Because remember, with Uranus, all time is happening at the same time, and Pisces gets that. Allowing oneself to connect day to day with better feeling thoughts and actions dreaming into a life and belief system that works for the individual. Valuing the self and the self-care can be a gateway to healthy and happy and evolutionary union with source while still in the human form. In the well is a great place to meditate. The Pisces must use their spiritual vibration in a healthy way, understanding one's spiritual nature. Taurus can help Pisces feel into dreams made manifest from the pool of pure potentiality. Taurus has the right tincture or herb from the garden. It has the physical nurturing that will ease the feeling that Pisces can have of being lost from source forever. Suicide or checking out when feeling overwhelmed is not necessary to transform painful impulses, memories, and desires. Embracing the Virgo polarity can help with grounding. Learn grounding and mindfulness practices and be willing to trust the unfoldment of life. So there we have it, a brief overview of how the feeling of Uranus and Taurus through the houses can go. I, we have eight long years to experience and share and expand and be electrified and inspired by Uranus working with the grounding nature of Taurus. So thanks you guys for joining in. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Linda, so much for your invitation. I want to thank Arden Reardon for the beautiful, beautiful graphic design. And my contact details are here. So if you want to contact me for a reading, please do so. I post new and 
full moon blog posts every month at www.soulastro.com. And you can email me at Lydia at soulastro.com. So I hope the rest of the day is wonderful. This will be on the EA Zoom Facebook site and it will also be um, posted to YouTube. Thanks again for letting me share. Great. Thank you so much. What a wonderful presentation. We look forward so much to seeing you again in the future. Would you all please thank Lydia Tretis. Thank you, Lydia. That was a fund of inf information. Thank you so much, Carolyn. Appreciate thank you, Lydia. it. Well done. Thank oh, you. thanks so much, you guys. I couldn't see your pictures as I, as I was doing the, um, the, the talk, but I could feel your presence and appreciate it so much. Okay, thank you. Okay. Thanks. Thanks. Bye, thank you, Lydia. Everybody. Wonderful. Ciao. Thank you. Bye bye. bye.